Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to control the fan speeds on your MSI motherboard using both the BIOS and also MSI Sensor. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're we'll taking a look at how to take control of your fans for both your system fan and also your CPU fan, or possibly even water cooling in your MSI motherboard. Now, we're going to be looking at this in two different ways. The first bit is in the BIOS of the motherboard, so you need to know how to get into the BIOS. You can, of course, get into the BIOS by pressing the delete key, or you can actually do it from within Windows itself. Uh, we've done videos on that before, so I won't go through and bore you with that. But essentially, for most people, it's just going to be mash that delete key when your system's rebooting. So let's not get too bogged down by it. Let's get straight into the video. Okay, so let's start off in the BIOS. So this is the MSI Click BIOS, the modern version, and today's date is the 12th of December, 2021. So this may look slightly different on your motherboard, but most of them these days do look very, very similar. So there's a few options and a few things we can do from in here. Essentially, most of it is all done from the same place, which is over in Hardware Monitor. So if you're in Easy Mode or if you're in Advanced Mode, you should find it very, very similar. So in the Easy Mode, which is what this is, then we can go into Fan Info, or you can go into Hardware Monitor, click on Advance, and you can go into Hardware Monitor. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to Hardware Monitor, and you should be presented with this particular screen. Now this particular motherboard has got quite a lot of fan headers on it. So we've got one for the CPU, we've got one for a pump, and also we've got six, yep, six system fan headers on there, all of which can be individually controlled. So let's start off with the, the CPU one first of all. So the CPU one, as you can see, is currently reading our RPM range. And this is the current fan curve that we have set. We've all got smart fan mode enabled. And also over on this side on the left, we've got our fan actually configured to be used in a specific way. So this is a really important part of the setup. So depending what your actual CPU fan has actually for a connector, which physically plugs into your board, which you'll probably be seeing from some B-roll now, there are two main options. So there is a four pin, which will generally be PWM. And also there's a three pin version. Again, you'll be seeing this on the screen, which is known as a DC or VDC. So the way the two work, the first one, the four pin works on pulse width modulation, which uh, yeah, is a posh name for basically granular control. The second option DC means it is voltage DC. So essentially what you're doing is going from a low voltage range up to a high voltage range and depending which voltage you select that will reflect in the speed of your fan if you're having problems with your fans and they're revving out of control or it's all going a little bit crazy you may find that you've got this set to the wrong actual setting for some people setting it to auto might just be fine and you'll find the fans behave as normal again if you're finding your fans are over revving or not responding in the way you want to or your system's getting a little bit too hot then maybe choose pwm or dc to work out which you've got so don't forget, DC is for three pin plugs. PWM generally is for four pin, but do check the wiring to make sure that all four pins on the PWM are actually wired and there isn't just one missing. Again, you'll see that from the picture from the B-roll. So that's the first part. So that is actually understanding how this works. Now, for those of you that are thinking, right, I've already got the MSI Center software installed. I've gone through there and I've changed it to PWM or DC. The problem is, the two don't always talk to each other. So the BIOS will sometimes actually override the software and vice versa. So it's always best to go into the BIOS first of all and make sure this is set up correctly. Sorry if I'm laboring on about this a little bit too much, but it is really important in order to get those fan speeds right. So once you're happy, you've got the right setting on here. So we've got PWM, we're in smart fan mode. If we take that away, then it'll basically take control of itself and do whatever it wants to do based on the various ranges. But in smart fan mode, you can actually click on these and you can move them around to adjust your curve. So if you wanted a particularly aggressive curve, then you can set all these. So we're going to set that to, that's 100% at, say, 70 degrees. And then we can set that to 60% at, sorry, 90% at 60 degrees and so on. So this up here would be a particularly aggressive curve. And you'll see now, you see the fan speed RPM is rising. This is all based on temperature. So depending on the temperature of your CPU, which you can see here, CPU socket or CPU core, this will be reflected here. So obviously the lower these are, the slower your fans are going to spin. So you can, if you want to, for a quieter system, 
you can obviously reduce these down considerably and then maybe towards the end as the system gets under a very aggressive load you can ramp up the fan so at 60 degrees will be around about 50 percent so around about 50 percent of our rpms or available speed at around about 60 degrees and then if it starts getting over 60 degrees it's then going to shoot up really rapidly up to 100 percent or so depending on the temperatures you can see that reflected over here on the chart so 70 degrees c we're looking at 100 percent 60 degrees we're looking at 53 percent 40 37 and 0 22 so our minimum speed on our fan is 22. Now if you've got fans which actually support 0 db you can actually reduce this down to zero and you can move this down to as little as you want so say for instance there so as you can see now really the fan's only going to start kicking in once we get into that kind of somewhere around about the 50 degrees mark hopefully this will make sense to you it should do uh, if you're not sure if your fan supports that actual setting zero db then you can go into the fans box or manufacturer's website and check it out for yourself now the one thing which is missing in here which is a little bit of a failing actually is there is no means of actually setting the low and high range of the actual fans but we can do that in the software in windows so we'll do that essentially what it does is it does a fan test and it will set the low and the high range of the fans so in order to save our settings here all we need to do is close this window here and then close down here press x and then it's going to tell you what it's going to do so these are the updated fan settings for fan one now, of course actually if we do this if i go back into hardware monitor and I'll show you the chassis fan one. So if we go into system fan one, which is the only one I've got connected, it's essentially exactly the same deal. We don't have an option for auto on here. We've only got PWM or DC. So again, depending on what your chassis fans are, if they're three pin, like you're seeing in the picture right now, make sure you set it to DC. If you've got a four pin, now you can see straight away, I've clicked on DC. And because that is the wrong setting for our hub that we're using, you can see it just has not got a clue what to do and it is ramped up to almost 2000 RPM, which is uh, yeah probably not great and not the sort of thing you want. So do make sure that you've got it set to the correct setting for your fan hub. I've actually got six fans, which again, you've probably seen from some of the B-roll, all of which are connected up to a Arctic 10 port hub, and then a single connection to the motherboard on system fan header one, hence why we're only getting one reading there. So yeah, hopefully that will make sense. So that is our chassis fan and also CPU. If you've got some water cooling device and you've got a pump connected, obviously you can go into pump as well. That also may be also PWM or DC controlled. Just check with your manufacturer and make sure you've got the right setting for your particular pump. Although saying that with a pump, generally you can run it anywhere between 18 and 100% all the time and it won't be too noisy. But again, that's going to depend on the manufacturer. So we can close this down and we'll go back into Windows now and take a look at the MSI Center to give us a little bit more control and also set our fan high and low speeds from the software. Okay, so we're back to our Windows desktop. This is uh, Windows 11, which some of you may or may not be using. The principle is exactly the same for Windows 10 or Windows 11. So when you're actually in the Windows environment, you can actually take advantage of MSI Center. Now, a lot of people didn't like it. The original version, the Dragon Center, was a little bit on the ropey side and wasn't great and it installed all kinds of stuff that you didn't want. But actually the new version, MSI Center, is really good. And you can see we've got it here running in the taskbar. In order to get the new MSI Center, what you want to do is head over to the Microsoft Store. And all you need to do is type in at the top here, so MSI and Center. And the one you want is this one here, which looks like this. That top one there, ignore, it's not a good one. And the Pro version, again, I've not used that, so I don't think there's any point. I think it's a paid one. But So we're going to MSI Center the app itself and you can download it here. You can download it from MSI's website and also you can download it from the individual motherboard website for your particular board so you can do it that way but I find just getting it from here is just as easy. As you can see I've already got it installed but if you haven't just click on install and then you can go ahead and open it. So that's how to actually get hold of the software and install it. There's some updates and you can register if you want to which will save your settings etc etc and also you can register your warranties that's all pretty good. So let's open up MSI Center. This is what you'll normally see, so it waits for the uh, elements to initialize. And if you're using it for the first time, this is probably what you're going to see, so your feature sets. So feature sets basically means applications. So the three that I've got installed are Gaming Gear, Mystic Light, and User Scenario. The User Scenario is basically your fan and all of your settings. Shame it's not called something different relief. Fan settings would probably make more sense, so this is the one you want. Mystic Light obviously is for controlling our addressable RGB lighting. 
and gaming gear is for things like the keyboard and mice, etc. But we want to concentrate on user scenario. So you can access it in a couple of ways from the feature sets. You can click on open, or you can go to the top here, click on features, and go to user scenario. So in user scenario, these are the options we've got here. Do make sure that you've got the fan box here set to on. Currently, we've let the CPU be in control by the motherboard rather than software, but fans are controlled actually from the MSI sensor itself. So we've got four options. Extreme performance basically is full blast. Uh, balanced is, well, what it says, balanced. Silent is, yep, <laughs> silent. Quieter fan speeds. But customize is probably where you want to go to actually get those finer settings and also control your fans better. So click on the cog here, the little white cog next to customize. And then we get our profile settings. So you can ignore most of this, but some of you may find the information useful. So you've got CPU frequency, etc., voltages, DRAM information. But the bit that we're more concerned about is fan. So we've got all of our fan headers here clearly laid out. CPU fan, pump fan, system of fan one, etc., etc. So in order to change these, all we need to do is to click on the settings cog, or the cog icon, and this will open up the individual settings. So this one you can see, clearly labeled CPU fan one, so no mistaking that. And the two options you've got are smart fan or manual fan. My manual fan is gonna be basically replicating what we get with VDC or voltage control of your fans. So you have either 100%, 75%, 50% or 25%. So just for an example, because we haven't actually set it yet, you can see it's gradually climbing up. So rather than going straight up, it's slowly climbing to 100%. So if you don't like that and you want it to be maybe 50%, click on 50% and we should find then it's going to start lowering a little bit. But for us, this isn't going to be ideal. So what we want to do is go into Smart Fan and to find out the high and the low range of our actual fan that we've got connected, we're going to click on Fan Tune. So we're going to click on Fan Tune there and it'll say there, Fan Tune function will take a moment to adjust. Do you want to apply? So let's click OK. Now what this is going to do is going to send a signal to each one of the system fan headers and CPU headers and pump headers on the motherboard and it's going to send voltage and PWM signal through all of them and work out where the fans stop and how fast they can actually go and get an RPM read in. So you can probably hear the fans have ramped up in the case which is next to me. And you can hear the fans slowly, gradually getting a little bit quieter. So this is where it's actually testing to see what voltages and RPMs are actually available to the system. So we'll let that carry on for a minute until it's finished. Just be patient. Try not to use the system if you can help it. You should find at some point the fans actually in the PC will entirely stop. It will only be briefly, so don't panic too much. Okay, so we're done. So now it's actually recreated a curve of its own based on the settings. So as you can see at the moment, the CPU fan one is now dropped down a little bit more, so it's worked out that it can actually reduce itself. So let's uh, change our curve slightly. And we've still got our 70% there. Again, you can change this however you want, just do whatever suits your particular needs. And once you've done that, it will adjust itself. You can see there, there is the temperature and RPM, and it gives you like a line graph to see what is going on. So this is for our CPU fan, but don't forget fan tune actually tunes all of the system fans. So at the moment, our chassis fans are spinning a little bit too fast for my liking. It's a little bit too noisy. So we're gonna head into system fan one, which is connected to our control hub. And as you can see at the moment, it's set it to something which is a little bit crazy. 85% like is a little bit on the mad side, or 85 degrees rather. So I'm gonna set this back to my personal preference. So we're gonna drag this one right down, drag that one right down, drag that away. And I'm gonna set it to what I normally do. So 100% at approximately 70 degrees. So there we go, 100%, 70 degrees. And 60, we'll set to somewhere around 40 or 50. And basically you can just tune this to your liking. So I think 30% as a minimum would be absolutely fine. It'll take a few seconds to actually kind of reflect the changes. So don't always assume it's gonna be okay, but it's 700 RPM, I can barely hear the fans. Okay, so now we've changed that setting and at 900 RPM, I can just about hear the airflow. So I'm gonna reduce this a little bit more. It's going to 30%. And we'll move that a little bit closer. And yes, the sound of silence. I could actually take it a little bit lower than that, I think, maybe. So we'll say 25%. 
Yes, that is absolutely silent. This actually, they are quieter now than the ambient noise in the room from the other PCs and equipment, etc., etc. So this for me is going to be perfect. As the system gets warmer, anything over 53 degrees C, it's then going to immediately start ramping up. And actually, we could probably reduce that slightly. Again, you can change this exactly however you want to. This is just my own personal settings. Obviously, do whatever you want and do whatever suits your fans and your airflow and your temperature needs, etc. But anyway, this is... Uh, the MSI Center. I would say definitely give it a go if you haven't used it before or you've used the Dragon Center and you didn't like it previously then I would say certainly this is for me I would argue possibly the best motherboard and fan control software on the market at the moment. I think MSI are doing a fantastic job with both their motherboards and their software currently so hopefully they will keep that up. Okay so there you go there is how to take control of your fans in MSI motherboards. We're using either the BIOS or a combination of the BIOS and the MSI Center. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section. Have you found this useful? Are your fans now under control? And of course, if you're still getting problems or it's not quite making sense, you can totally ask us any questions in the comment section below. Or of course, we have got our Discord chat community. You're more than welcome to come on there. It is all text-based chat, so you don't have to worry about getting a microphone and uh, talking to strange people on the internet. It's absolutely fine. Just type in your questions and we can answer them for you. So yeah, hopefully that's... Uh, sort out all your problems and all your questions and queries if not yeah get us in touch with us but for now i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching